This is going to be awesome. I absolutely love doing Michael Thomas stories. This is my third one on my channel so far, and each and every single one that I've done so far is absolutely mysterious and somewhat comical. Now, before we get to the content, I asked you guys in a poll on my community tab what we should give away next now that we announced the previous giveaway winner, and a lot of you guys wanted us to run back the same giveaway. And because I still have 72% of you guys that aren't subscribed to my channel, if you subscribe and turn on our notifications, you'll enter for a chance to win a next generation console. I'm going to be announcing the giveaway winner in the middle of September because I'm not really going to be here in the beginning of September. And I'll tell you more about that on my Instagram page. And if you could leave a like on this video, it would help this channel out a lot and would be greatly appreciated. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Like I said before, this is far from the first time I had to cover Michael Thomas in a story. And every single time I've covered Michael Thomas in a story, it's been very interesting to say the least. Honestly, interesting isn't even the right word for it. It's very excessive and it's almost as if I'm covering a Kardashian at this point. Meaning that I think Michael Thomas could possibly be one of the most melodramatic wide receivers in the entire NFL. And I don't want to just come out and blindly say that he's a diva, but I'll give you some examples so you guys could determine if he's a diva wide receiver for yourselves. The first example comes literally from a poll that NFL on Fox's Instagram posted asking which is harder, record a catch while being covered by Patriots cornerback Stephon Gilmore or breaking up a pass that's intended for Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas. And very easy and basic question that the NFL on Fox Instagram page posted about a year ago just to boost their engagement. But Devontae Parker happened to see this and voted that it's way harder to record a catch while being covered by Stephon Gilmore. And I suppose the reason why he said this is because Devontae Parker is a wide receiver and I guess he doesn't understand how difficult it is to cover Michael Thomas, or he may have had to experience the first one himself. Now, Michael Thomas kind of took this as an insult to him as a wide receiver, as opposed to, oh, this is something that Devontae Parker could relate to, and added Devontae Parker saying, for you, yes, referring to making a reception on Stephon Gilmore, go run some numbers up, then you can't talk, I lapped you, and you've been in the league longer than me, first rounder. Devontae Parker kind of looks at Michael Thomas, Thomas and says, do you have some hard feelings for me there, bro? Let me get targeted 300 times a game. Michael Thomas responds by saying, in other words, you weak. They don't even put your name in the same sentence as me. Remember that. And you still are not going to do anything. It took you six years and 17 weeks to have a good game. Get the f out of here. Blame your parents, not no QB. Devontae Parker says, quit crying, bro. Michael Thomas responds by saying, you heard what I said. And, you know, they kind of go back and forth before Michael Thomas says, you can't even get a seat at the table. So that should give you an idea of how sensitive Michael Thomas can be. But in addition to this, to give you an idea of how volatile this guy could be, Michael Thomas kind of threw some shade at Drew Brees literally a week after the New Orleans Saints and Drew Brees' final game for the New Orleans Saints when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were facing off against the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship game. With the first tweet being, if a defensive back knows the quarterback can't throw deep, they are going to play aggressive under Underneath with safety help over the top. And I don't really think that tweet's that bad, but what he says after this was, anyone can cover you if you're running a shallow cross all day, just play underneath they not throwing over your head. And I guess this could be misinterpreted, but bear in mind, Drew Brees' average pass only traveled 5.4 yards downfield. So yeah, I think this may have been a shot at his quarterback, even though Michael Thomas isn't necessarily wrong in this instance, because Drew Brees Breeze's arm strength was a pretty good reason why the New Orleans Saints were shut down in their final NFC playoff game. So basically, you get the idea. Michael Thomas could be a little volatile when it comes to handling himself. And this is what caused a lot of intrigue for me personally, because apparently,
Ridley, Michael Thomas, and the New Orleans Saints aren't necessarily on the greatest of terms. Now, bear in mind, the Saints are going through a very big transitional period this offseason. They are moving on from Drew Brees, and I suppose Jameis Winston is the new face of the New Orleans Saints, or at least the new quarterback of the Saints. So Michael Thomas is going to get a lot of different looks. He's no longer going to be that quick pass artist that many of us troll him on Twitter for being. You know how we all make fun of him for just making most of his receptions off of ins and slants and outs and etc. Jameis Winston is kind of known for having a cannon of an arm, but also throwing a ton of interceptions. So this year is going to be very different for him. But even though this is a make or break off season for Michael Thomas, an off season where he should try to get to training camp and do his best to get along and form chemistry with his brand new quarterback that could get him some brand new opportunities for some deeper receptions, which is apparently what he appears to be yearning for. Michael Thomas has been ghosting or ignoring the New Orleans Saints over the last three months. And this comes from Jeff Duncan of NOLA.com, who reports that Michael Thomas ignored multiple calls over a three-month period as then Saints trainer Bo Lowry and wide receivers coach Curtis Johnson and head coach Sean Payton all tried to reach him to see how his ankle was doing. Now, Michael Thomas was initially advised by the Saints medical staff to have the ankle surgery immediately after the Saints postseason came to an end. But after getting a second opinion, he decided to try a more conservative approach and see if the ankle would heal without surgery. That didn't work, and Michael Thomas ultimately would have surgery in June, and the recovery time from the surgery will cause Michael Thomas to miss several games at the start of the season, and Sean Payton said recently that Michael Thomas should have had surgery earlier. Now, this kind of reminds me, I know I've been doing a lot of basketball parallels lately, but I can't help it because I also have a basketball channel called The Flight Mike, where I do basketball news there. But this kind of reminds me of Scotty Pippen when he was upset with the Chicago Bulls over his contract situation during his final season with the Chicago Bulls during the 97 to 98 NBA season. He opted to have surgery later as a form of protest to the Chicago Bulls. That way he would miss regular season games. And I'm not accusing Michael Thomas of doing this, but a part of me can't help but wonder if that was part of his game plan because it wouldn't be out of character for Michael Thomas to do something like that. But personally, I like giving players the benefit of the doubt. And I'm assuming that he actually wanted to see if he could heal without doing surgery. Now, the article continues by saying that if Michael Thomas had stayed in touch with the team over the offseason, the determination that he needed the surgery might have been made earlier and he might have recovered in time for the regular season. But instead, Michael Thomas disappeared for much of the offseason and now the Saints won't have him to start the season. And it's clear that the New Orleans Saints aren't happy about that. And of course, the New Orleans Saints aren't happy about that. This is your superstar wide receiver. You're transitioning from a Hall of Fame quarterback. And of course, when you're transitioning from a Hall of Fame quarterback, you do want your top wide receiver available for you to make Jameis Winston's life easier. But that's not it because Michael Thomas actually reacted to the situation. And I'm so happy that I didn't make a video on this until now. I wanted to bring this out for you guys on Saturday, but the Aaron Donald stuff happened. I wanted to bring it out for you guys on Sunday, but to be honest, I was a little hungover and I wanted to make sure I did a good job on this video because there's so much to talk about here. And thankfully, since I waited until Monday, Michael Thomas came out and at 3.30 a.m. Pacific time, came out and tweeted this, saying that they tried to damage your reputation and you saved theirs by not telling your side of the story. So Michael Thomas is implying that there's two sides of the story and he's not necessarily being heard out on his part of the story. So we have to keep an eye on this situation because it sounds like we're not getting everything in regards to this whole situation. Regardless, Michael Thomas does have a history of getting involved in these types of endeavors. He was involved in trade rumors in the very, very beginning of 2020. I made a video on how the Philadelphia Eagles may possibly be interested in trading for him. So would it be possible that the New Orleans Saints would even enter Entertain training Michael Thomas as they might be entering for a rebuild, assuming that Jameis Winston isn't the quarterback that he once was. I think that's fairly doubtful. You should do whatever it takes to bring your star wide receiver back. See how it works out with Jameis Winston. You have players like Alvin Kamara on the roster. Your offensive line is stacked. You did make some nice defensive additions as well. You have this three-headed monster running back core. Well, I'd like to say even four-headed monster of Alvin Kamara.
Kamara, Latavius Murray, Devontae Freeman, and Ty Montgomery. But the glue that holds this offense together is Michael Thomas, because without Michael Thomas, you're starting players like Traycon Smith, then Deontay Harris, and Marquez Callaway. So there is a lot of potential offensively for the New Orleans Saints. And defensively, I always thought that this was a very good team, but they need Michael Thomas back, and hopefully this gets resolved soon. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this entire situation. And of course, follow us on Twitter and Instagram if you want to talk to me about this a little bit more. I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.